right, I'm going to go ahead and start our meeting or call our meeting back to order. We uh, took a recess today at lunch and uh, re are reconvening here today, and I just am impressed to see all of you here. Welcome. I'm curious, how many of you, this might be your very first time to ever come to a council meeting? That's pretty Ooh. impressive. Uh, we appreciate you coming and hope that this is a an experience in watching government work the right way where we're trying to hear people and listen and and um, find something that our community wants it's a it's, it's a great honor to be able to serve and I'm sitting with my friends here that have the same feeling again we appreciate you coming out tonight hopefully uh, it will be a good experience for you and there are a few little things I'd like to mention if I could before we get started Let's think about ourselves as neighbors and that we're all part of the same community. And if someone stands up and says something you don't agree with, just listen to them and don't really respond to them or react to them. Get, let them get their peace. Listen to what they're having to say. And that way, if we're listening to each other, we'll be able to maybe make a better decision. So just remember that we're all Midlanders. We're all part of the same community. And at the end of the day, we may not get everything that we want, but if we're listening to each other, it will be um, better than what we could do by ourselves if we're, if we're all being involved. So just try to re be respectful. Our goal, or particularly my goal, and I know the rest of the council feels this way, we want to do something that reflects your wishes. This is not uh, government telling you what it needs to be. This is the community asking uh, government to say, this is what we would like. So we're going to be listening to you. We're going to be um, taking notes, and at the end of this process, which we will not take a vote tonight, but someday we will, that vote will ultimately depend on what you guys, the input that you've given to us today. So again, we just thank you for being here. I um, know you pass out these little cards, and we'd ask that you would respect other people and the time that, that they have to uh, give us their thoughts. If someone has said something that you were going to say, it's really not necessary to say it again. If we hear it once, that's good enough. And I don't say don't, I'm, I'm, you can't, don't come up and talk, but at least don't repeat the same thing someone else has said. So think about, listen what they're saying, and that way we'll be able to get through this evening and, and uh, really come up with something that, that's uh, good for us all. I guess I want to open it up to the other council and and uh, maybe have some open remarks. I know that uh, Vicki had some things she wanted to mention, and uh, I think the mics are on. Testing. Yeah, it's I on. guess the mic is on, huh? Well, good evening, everybody. I know this has been a very touchy subject for everybody, and this ordinance cannot be a one-size-fit-all and for it to actually work for each neighborhood. So that's why it's very important that everyone's here and get a chance to speak their opinion and offer us some suggestions as to how we can make this ordinance work for all of the city of Midland because we want all of Midland to be beautiful, but at what extent and at whose price. So uh, we welcome your comments and uh, feel free to speak. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I'd like for Councilman James to have a few words on this too. <laughs> I love Vicki yeah, Haley. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> How about being on the spot for a second? Uh, yeah, that, that's all right. It's never, never affected me before. But, you know, I want to echo uh, the, the sentiments of both the mayor and uh, council member Haley. One of the greatest things about um, uh, a meeting like this is that there are more of you out there than there are of us up here. And, and that really resonates with us because um, we sit in a lot of meetings two or three times a month and there's all of us up here and there's one or two people who have to be there um, out in the audience. So we really appreciate everybody taking their time to be with us today. And I will say it isn't a one size fits all, but there is a right recipe for Midland, Texas on this issue, I'm convinced. And by hearing what everybody has to say, all sides of the issue, I think we're going to get there. So again, I appreciate everybody being here. Maybe I'll just start and give you a little bit of an a overview of what our current ordinance is right now, which is, it's been interesting. As we got into this one, we started looking at what our current ordinance is, and it's, it's got some problems with it. So at the very minimum, 
you need to know where we're starting from. And today, you can uh, park as many cars as you want on a paved surface or a asphalt surface. If you have a, let's say, caliche driveway, you're, you shouldn't have any cars on it at all. So, so the court, current ordinance, we're not enforcing very well. And I'd say that's just over the years, it just has evolved that way. And you could park one automobile, a truck, or a car on grass today. But if you don't have any um, pavement or uh, asphalt, you shouldn't have any dry, any cars in your yard or driveway either. Uh, so it's it's something that's that we're going to have to address. And really, this has brought some attention to this issue that we can we can get on with. So I appreciate again. Just that's a very very short over, overview. If you have real particular questions, we have staff here that can give you those details and be able to. Um, answer things if, if we need to get in that kind of detail. But with uh, no more uh, uh, remarks, I don't know, do, does anyone else on the council? Michael? Scott? Yeah. Well, I just don't want to violate the rules of the public hearing tonight, so I don't have anything else to say because I think you guys have already said it all. So. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> all right, so uh, if we can get started, and probably what I'd like to do is start at the front and uh, go backward, but go back to the back, and if we can um, just start with the front row, and if anyone wants to start speaking, just come up to one of the mics, and uh, I think you have those little cards, but if you would give us your name and address, and we will uh, start with you, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, is it on? Hello? Okay. Yeah, that's My good. name is Nancy Jones. I live at 706 East Broadway. I live in District 3, represented by John James. We in our neighborhood have recently, over the last couple of years, have had a problem with Mr. James is aware of, of a travel trailer being parked on someone's front yard with people living in it with a generator running 24 hours a day while he has people living in it. We have, y'all have asked him to stop, but he, can he will continue to do it. We also have a young lady who, whose family lives on Louisiana that uses the alley behind my house and all her friends to park their cars on their side yard. She speeds down the alley. It disrupts our, you know, the dust and everything. But we want in our neighborhood to have it to where you can't park on your yard because it just, in our deal, it may be a safety issue. That if there's a fire in that house, how does the fire department get into that house if something's going on? But I understand if there is someone that is in great need that needs to park closer to their front door, we don't have a problem. But this family will park their Suburban on the front yard and leave it there overnight. And we just feel as a neighborhood, we don't want that in our neighborhood. We want it to be a nice neighborhood where people can be proud of it. I'm tired of the dust and the dirt in my house from the family using their alley as a driveway to park on their side yard. And I think there needs to be issues, I mean exceptions to this issue. And I think we can all work together to, to have this work together, but I just think right now some things don't need to be parked on the front yard. I park on the street. I have a one-car driveway. We park on the street. I don't want to park on the yard, and none of my neighbors park except the one family that just likes to have people come camp out on the front yard. So okay. thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. All right. Anyone else on the front there? Yeah. Mr. Flournoy? Uh, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Go ahead. Yeah, Willie, go ahead. Uh, Willie Barber, 1305 yes. Chestnut. Uh, to our Honorable Mayor and to the remaining City Council members, first of all, I'd like to thank you for hosting this meeting at a night time. And uh, I think this will probably give the council an idea of probably if we look at changing some of those council times periodically, uh, that we might get a better turnout at our City Council meetings. Now, with that said, um, <laughs> yeah, we may not want to change our times. <laughs> Go ahead, Will. Uh, when I look at this, I think of, first of all, before we change anything, I think safety is probably one of the most criteria that we should use. And when I, uh, as far as where I live, I'm experiencing on the east side of me, I have a neighbor that parks on a little gravel, and then on the west side of me, I have a person that parks uh, on their yard on a big shade tree because the city council won't let us build uh, carports anymore. So as a result of that, he feels that he should park up under that tree to keep his investment uh, for his car. 
But I just think that when you look at the safety issue of this, uh, I know there was mention of maybe about a fire, but when I look at it, I don't see that big of a problem for safety. Then I think that when you look at for as buying or selling, for me, I'm not in the business of selling my home, so that doesn't affect me. Buying, I think if I were to buy something, I'm going to evaluate that neighborhood quite well before I invest in it. Fourthly, I feel that when you take a look at, uh, am I going to talk about the value of my home and how this is going to affect the value of my home? Well, if that's going to lower my taxes, I think that I have a couple of cars. I might park a couple of them in front of my yard if that's going to help me with that. <laughs> And stuff. So, Mr. Mayor, I just really hope that we take a real good look at this because I am tired of Big Brother telling us what all we can do on our property. Now, I'm right in the middle of this, and I do understand the, the value part. And I do understand all the elements that has probably been mentioned thus far, but we have to drive up and down our alleys because the city told us that's where we can put our carports in our backyard, and that's all we got is alleys. So, I mean, I just think that we just take a good look at this before we make uh, a harsh decision on this audience. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barber. Mr. Fulnoy. Y'all gonna have to excuse me if I've got my glasses. <laughs> All right. I'll do if you'll remind us of your name and address, please. Okay. My name is Thomas Flournoy. I live at 3302 West Kansas. I'm a native Midlander and a World War II veteran. And I'm commonly known around here as Mr. Constitution. Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council, I hold in my hand a copy of the oath of office you were required to take before you entered the office you hold. Please permit me to refresh your memory. I, that is each of you, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of city council member for the city of Midland of the state of Texas and will do and will to the best of my ability serve, preserve, protect and defend the constitution and laws of the United States and this state, so help me God." Unquote. This means that you would approve, that if you should approve of anything that is unauthorized by the Constitution, not authorized by the Constitution, you will have violated your oath of office. You understand that? Mm -hmm. sure. Okay. When was the last time you read your Constitution, our Constitution, not yours, but ours? Nowhere will you find in it authorizes you to force citizens to refrain from parking their automobiles in their front yard. And there is no authorization for protecting citizens from their property values being reduced, no matter what the issue. To protect your in integrity, please read the Constitution to make sure you are not violating your oath of office. Thank you. Thank you. All right, wait for a second. All right, uh, let's go to the second row. Anybody there? Yeah, if we want to, and, and we could do this also, if you want to get in line and just kind of get in a queue, it doesn't necessarily have to be all the way out the door, but if, if you'd prefer to do it that way, it'd be great. Mr. Rosen? Yes, I am David Rosen. I live in uh, District 1 at 5002 Thames Court. And uh, I'm glad that most uh, everyone in my particular neighborhood has garages because that's the way the neighborhood was built. But I have a deep um, concern uh, for, con for trying to uh, uh, prevent people from parking on their yard if they do not have a paved driveway. Because, let's face it, not everybody <coughs> does have a paved driveway and they still need a place to park. And um, we, we need to accommodate them somehow and I think that we might think about changing the ordinance to accommodate uh, people who don't have paved driveways um,
to where if they have a caliche driveway, they don't have a caliche driveway, and they need to park uh, someplace else, and they don't have a curb, and the street's too narrow, why, the front yard may be where it needs to be. But I think, too, we should think about some kind of controls on having um, cars and cars and cars in our front yards, that if we choose to put cars in our front yards, they need to be uh, drivable and they need to be appropriately licensed so that we don't wind up with a bunch of undrivable vehicles in people's yards. And I think that we should think of some kind of limit if people choose and we allow people to park in their yards, maybe uh, two vehicles, something like that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosen. All right. Mr. Stovall. I'm Richard Stovall. I live 4503 Malkin Bird Lane. Been in Midland for 56 years, 57 years. In fact, I'm already in trouble, so I can say what I want to. Today's my 56th anniversary, and I'm up here, and I should be in Rio Dosa somewhere <laughs> with my wife. But, <laughs> but anyway, I'd like to make a statement, and that statement being as if the city had been diligent in enforcing the ordinance that we already have, and that is any unlicensed, any uninspected automobile in sight, could be behind a fence, behind your house, beside it. If they had enforced those being picked up or making people move them, there wouldn't be enough of the licensed ones that anybody would be making any, any fuss over. We wouldn't even be here tonight. Mm -hmm. The city has been very negligent in that area. Now, I, my lot is 325 feet wide. I got some real nice shade trees. And I park my truck and I park my car under those shade trees a lot. I do not have a paved driveway or a cliche driveway, and I haven't had for 36 years. Now, mind you, I was in the country when the city decided they wanted <coughs> some tax money and took in our area, and they made us agricultural estates, which is my second part of the deal. And we've got neighbors. They've got horses. They've got this and that. They've got trailers. They've got kids, and everybody's got to pick up. And, and uh, they all park around the front, what have you. If we parked on the side of the street, Mockingbird Lane would be a one-laid street. I would also have to walk 150, 200 feet to go in my front door. And occasionally, when I get down the back or something, I park right in my front door to get in and out of the house. And so I resent the fact that the possibility, I might have to spend $20,000 paving the driveway to have a place to park my car when I have two acres of land and, and the city wants to tell me I can't park on my grass occasionally. I don't like junk and, I, and, and you know, it's based around everything. So if, we'd just, if you've got a car that's over 35 years old, you're exempt from that <laughs> unlicensed. I just got through cleaning up a guy's place that had a whole bunch of cars in the city. But I was there a long time before the city was. And I, and I keep my yard mowed and what have you, and I, I wish I'd keep it a little better than it is, but I'm a 75-year-old guy that has to do everything for himself because Midland has been good to me and it's been bad to me. I've been one of those guys been through about four of these booms and busts, and, and, and it takes a while to recover from every one of them. The other thing is I'd like to you all to think real seriously about our agricultural estates area because of the horse trailers and the, and the pickups and stuff like that. The worst thing that ever happened when the city took us in wasn't the tax money. It was they put a bunch of dumpsters out in our front yards on both sides of the street, <clears throat> which are dangerous because they're so close to the pavement and we only have a little two-lane two -lane road there that people could easily, if they got the least bit distracted, run over one and get killed. So that, those are things, and they look a lot worse to me than a licensed automobile that somebody gets in and moves probably twice a day going to the grocery store or go to town. So you need to think about the needs of the people. And, uh, and it's sort of like, you know, if you buy a house out there by Air, Air Park, knowing that airport's there, and don't gripe about it. Don't try to change it. It was there first. Okay, thank you. All right, sir, if you would. And we, we, we could be here for a long, long time if we don't really honor the, the respect each other rules. So, again, if we would please. Yes, sir, your name and address. Patrick Deering, 5115 West Illinois. 
I think the overriding concern has to be one of safety. Every time you put a car in the street, on the, on the street, it narrows that street that much more. It doesn't matter if it's a residential street or a four-lane street like West Illinois, it still narrows it at that point. And any time it's more narrow, uh, it becomes more dangerous. Um, I once had a car, a car that was totaled, legally parked. That was not in, in Midland, but today I tracked down stats from uh, TxDOT on the role of um, parked vehicles in accidents in Midland. Since 2003, there have been 1,430 accidents uh, involving parked cars in Midland. Uh, over the last three years, 07, 08, 09, it's averaged 270 per year. That's almost one a day. Every four days, you have three accidents involving parked cars. It's already a dangerous situation. Also, among those accidents, there was one fatality, 14 incapacitating injuries, and 133 other injuries. Uh, you know, motorists going down the street, uh, if, they're, if they're cut off their lanes, you know, they're forced one side or the other, and that can create a problem. Uh, the more cars that are parked there, um, people backing out of their driveway. Uh, if it's passed where we are, there'll be people who are forced to park on the street. Therefore, uh, the, the line of sight is reduced for those backing out as well as those passing by. A greater potential for, for um, accident and injury. Not only that, but pedestrians uh, walking down the street. Currently, often they will, uh, cars will double park, well, me meaning end to end in their driveways. <laughs> And then with uh, vehicles parked on the street adjacent, it creates a situation where you're forced to walk out in the street. And it's, it's one thing for an adult like, like myself who, who walks every day in the neighborhood, but we also have the, the, the school kids to think about. You know, no ordinance can ignore the risk uh, of personal injury in this situation, especially when it has to do with our um, school children. And so I would urge the council to consider the safety factor. Uh, you know, I think it has to take precedence above and beyond any beautification or any uh, tax valuation considerations. Thank you. Thanks, sir. All right. Who is anyone else? Yes, sir. Please. And I had mentioned this earlier. We have uh, Maricela Hernandez. Where is Maricela? Hello, there she my, is. My name is Daniel Hernandez. Uh, one sec, sir. If, if you're having a hard time understanding English, Miss uh, Miss uh, Hernandez can help you, and she'll interpret if anyone needs help with that. Well, I should have introduced you earlier. So if you could uh, introduce yourself, that'd be great. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, go I ahead, sir. You can sir. see I'm Mexican, huh? <laughs> no, actually, it just it, I saw somebody sell her. She's walking forward. I thought I needed to make that announcement. Well, I got my green card. Am I turning red? You, you, you got me. I don't know what to say. Okay, well, I'm I apologize. <laughs> My name is Daniel Hernandez. Yes, sir. And I was born in, here, and I was born in 1950. Yes, sir. Raised on Lee and Walnut Street. My parents still live. They're in their 80s. Are they you, live do there you right live now. there now, sir? Is that your address? That's right. Okay. Well, well, right now I'm taking care of them, but I got my own house. Okay. On Hamby, 1116 East Hamby. 1116. All right. Thanks, sir. Appreciate you. Okay. Yes. Okay. And after 60 years, they finally this year finished paving Walnut, eight blocks, I guess. 60 years. Oh, thank you. Now you want to slap me with a fine for parking my car in my yards? I have eight kids, and I already lost count of my grandkids. <laughs> they come visit me, and if I have my cars parked on the street, uh, they, I guess they're going to have to go park two blocks away to come to my house. And another thing, if there's a fire there, like this man says, there's no firemen are going to pass through there because the street's already congested. I think that's a bad idea, and I think whoever thought of that is... I shouldn't be thinking those things because that's legal extortion. 
in my books. Legal extortion, man, and I'm mad, man. I went to the war to fight for my rights. And when I bought that property, I bought it from an individual, not from the city. And right now, the west side also is already exempt because you all got paved alleys over there. <laughs> paved alleys, man. You just 60 years took all right, you. Wait just a second, years. please. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm mad, man. I've got a lot of grandkids, a lot of family. I have a friend that's got 80 something grandkids. Now, where are they going to park? <laughs> <laughs> Now, I still got a lot more to say, but I'm already too mad to say more. All right. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Appreciate it. All right. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Manny Rivera, 800 Boyd, Midland, Texas. Uh, this has been a real concern to me, I, I guess, because I grew up in the community. I, I grew up where they need a lot of, you know, cement poured, et cetera, you know. And, uh, oh, I've been listening to this economist uh, for the last two years, uh, Gerald Salante, look him up. But, you know, he's been predicting our U.S. world economy since 1980, and every year he's uh, almost 100% accurate. And he predicts that by the year 2012 that we will have food lines all over the United States. And we're here concerned of this little cement. I mean, you know, it's just, I think the Bible says that the basic necessities of life, the good Lord, your house, plenty to eat, and some clothing. I mean, we need to see where we, we're going as the global world and as the economy. And, I mean, the people on where I grew up in town, you know, can't really afford uh, a cement slab. And they shouldn't be punished. They should be put in jail. Uh, the people who are really for it, you know, I mean, if they want to start marathons and donate a, a concrete slab to whoever keeps their yard clean is on the positive side without any punishment. So I know we're a strong Christian community and... All I can say is be as Christ-like as we can, and remember Jesus always associated himself with the low people, with the poor, the needy. God bless you all. Love you all much. Thank you. Yes, sir? My name is Ron Parrish. I live here in Midland. I was born and raised here. Um, I'd like to start out by oh, reminding... Sorry to interrupt you. Can I get your, your street address again? Just for the record. Address, seven, 715 South Jackson. Gotcha. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I won't remind you, um, I won't repeat what the gentleman said Mr. Constitution had brought up. I'll just remind you of it. You have an oath and you have a sworn duty to perform uh, the duties to, for the citizens of Midland. And uh, Mr. Mayor, you and the city council have broken that oath when you uh, unlawfully taken my truck, uh, compensated my truck. It was parked on my property uh, for years and the city came by one day, the police came by and ticketed and said it was illegally parked on the street. It was not, it was never parked on the street. Certainly wasn't parked on the street when the police officer said it was cited for being illegally parked on the street. And I brought this to you after they ticketed uh, a few days later, uh, they came by and uh, picked up the truck and hauled it away. And a few weeks later, they auctioned it off. And in between the time that they had take, ticketed the truck and picked it up, I came to you the very next day, asked if you would uh, explain what was going on, what, what could I do to get my truck back, and uh, spoke to you and other city council members, and you assured me a few days later that I would get my pickup back. And when I got it back, I would not be able to park it in front of my house because I was told then that that was a right of way, and, uh, which I wasn't aware of that. My father wasn't aware of that for the 50 years that he had parked there. 
but all of a sudden we get a new ordinance saying you cannot park your truck there. You mentioned that uh, you can't park it on the grass, you can't park it on caliche, and you told me that when I got my truck back that I could not park it in the front, but I could park it in the yard if I wanted to, or I could park it in the vacant lot that was across the street from my house. I didn't want to do that. Uh, but it, in either way, I did not get my truck back. I went through everything that I could uh, through legal steps to get my truck back, but I did not. Um, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, the city, when you convene and you discuss rules, I heard one gentleman mention a few minutes ago about uh, having problems with Big Brother forcing themselves upon us. You know, I'm a law-abiding law citizen. I've lived here in Midland all of my life, and uh, I've gotten speeding tickets. I've gotten uh, speeding tickets. That's just about <laughs> uh, that's about the extent of it. But as far as uh, uh, law-abiding law citizen, uh, that's the rule that I live by. And you don't have any problems with Ron Parrish as far as breaking city ordinances or uh, any other law for that fact. And I, I would just like to uh, mention, while, as you said, while we are all convened here today to work out these things right here, the Bible says that all things are lawful but not expedient. You guys can make your rules and make your laws, but if you're going to force citizens to abide by what you say, then you've not only broken your oath, but you've, you've broken what the Bible says that should be enforced for people in general. And uh, I, I just, I fail to see what the city council does as far as anything is profit or good for the city of Midland when you take my property and do not return it. You were told, I was told by you, I was told by uh, city officials that I would be compensated this has been two years now, and absolutely nothing has been done about it. And I would like to bring that to your attention, just see if we can get something done. Okay, very good. Yeah, and your, your particular circumstance I do understand, and if you want to call me, we'll be happy. I'll be happy to visit with you particularly about that, and I think we have. And now's not the best time, obviously, so uh, yeah, call me at the I'm office. I'm pretty sure it isn't for you, Mr. Mayor. Well, we're you here for a public hearing for lots of this ordinance about uh, parking, and so I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you. you I'll said, be pleased to. You told me that this morning. I hadn't heard anything. I have three telephones at my house. I didn't hear anything from you. Yes. I, you told me that two years ago, and yes. I heard anything Okay. Well, I've been in council meeting all day today, so I'll, I'll promise you I'll call you. Yes, Mr. Uh, Dallas. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I apologize. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I I'm apologize. Lydia, I'm Lydia Rodriguez. I'm Rodriguez. I live at 1309 East Jacks. And my comment on the situation is that uh, um, there's vehicles, which everybody's talking about, which my point is trucks that have big old tires. A lot of time there's vehicle park on this side, on your right side, and there's vehicles, big old trucks on the left side. Now there's two streets for you to go in and out. And there's a lot of time, the tire's so huge, it doesn't let no one see who's coming the other side. So a lot of time we have to kind of slow down. And a lot of time, a lot of people don't stop, they don't slow. And that, that, what my whole point is, when you try to go up, it seems that either that person's gonna hit you or you're gonna hit that one person. And, and I wish that someone would do something about it because I mean, it's, it's dangerous, you know? Uh, a lot of trucks, some of the trucks, it doesn't even have a tag. They've been parked and sit there for maybe two, three years, and has never done nothing about it. And I, I know they used to put tags to move them or we're taking them out, in which it has not been done. I've been to lots of streets all over here in Midland, and there are vehicles that I've been passing through them for so long, and they're still there. You know, my whole point is, I wish someone would do something about it because, you know, if these big old trucks that have, you know, big old tires and there have been an accident in that place, and then half of the tires are on top of the sidewalk. Now, how do you expect us to walk on the sidewalk when we have to walk around the truck 
And if someone comes and hit me or anyone there, so whose fault is it going to be? They're going to blame me because I walk that way, which is not my fault because the vehicle shouldn't have been parked on top of the sidewalk. And, you know, and then a lot of time, too, they park the wrong way instead of being parking the right way, the way they're supposed to, and no one doesn't do nothing about it. And I wish they would do something because if they're not going to fix that vehicle, throw it out or get rid of it or sell it, do something to it because a lot of people does need that spot, you know, and they're taking over the street where we can go through it in and out, you know. But that's my whole point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. All right. Skeet. My name is Skeet Doss. I live at 5451 Juniper Court. Um, I would simply like to say that as a real estate broker in this town, I think there's a lot of people that are sitting here today that have children and have relatives that have had homes that they have spent excessive money on to try to fix up and make into nice places that they're proud of. I go out to try to list that house and we list the house for a very reasonable price and we're unable to procure buyers because we have next door neighbors that choose to live in trash. And a lot of that includes cars sitting in the front and trash in yards. I disagree totally with Mr. Flournoy. We are given the right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. A next door neighbor can sue you if water runs off and goes down into your house and floods it. A neighbor can also sue you for putting a car over there that destroys the value of your house. I see that it's very expedient for everybody, not for the lowly, not for the rich. I think that it is expedient for everyone in this town to have the right to own property and to not suffer the consequences because of neighbors that choose not to take care of their property. And it is a problem. And I will go further to say that I listened to Mrs. Haley when she came to the, tech, to the Permian Basin Association of Realtors to talk to us. I am not stupid. There are exceptions to every rule. There are places on the east side that have streets that are less than 20 feet wide. There are houses over there that do not have curbs. Nobody knows where those start. But that's where your job comes in. That's why it's up to y'all to decide how you're going to do this and how you're going to put it. But to simply say that I have 80 grandkids and when they come to see me where they park, well, if you can put 80 cars on your lot, I want to be the one to sell it because that's a big lot. <laughs> I see that you can park cars on the street when people come to visit. We're not talking about that. We're talking about blatant abuse of property rights, and that's all that this is. Um, I say thank you to all of you. You have a totally thankless job, and we all know that. But on the flip side of that, you have a responsibility. Yes, you have a responsibility to everybody out there that owns a home. But it can't be just to the one that wants their way and to the one that destroys the property value of their neighbors. It can't be that way. And I understand that everybody owns their property and they want to do with it what they please. There are alleys in most parts of this town that we're talking about this ordinance that you could drive down an alley and move your fence in and park in the alley without sticking it in your front yard diagonally or putting three or four cars up there that don't run. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm Audie Stevens. I live at 4317 Cedar Spring. Uh, took me 30 years to pay for that house. I've lived there for 37 years. I believe in parking in the yard. I'm not going. If my neighbors go out there and plant flowers in the yard, that doesn't mean I need to jump out there and put flowers in my yard. I do not live there for my neighbors. My house is a functional house. It serves my needs and my purpose. If parking in the yard is what I want to do with it, I ought to have the option to be able to do that because it is my house. It is my property. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. My name is Leonard Dumeyer. I live at 708 Raymond. Uh, when I was reading part of the articles in the paper and listening to the discussions earlier on this, there were many different exemptions that were listed. And my concern is if we have to have this many exemptions, why are we making a change? If there has to be, I mean, it's here's the rule. 
accept, 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 and how many accepts do we, when do we finally stop? And also, uh, the whole idea of the fact of uh, safety being in the, not in the yards, but on the street is very foreign to me because I was raised in a city in Michigan. I've been in Midland since 82, got here as quick as I could. Um, that when I was a youngster, they passed an ordinance that after 8 p.m. at night, you could not park on the city streets for the purpose of public safety. And so that way the street would be clear for emergency vehicles, et cetera. So those are my comments. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Mr. Dumeier. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Hi. my name is Bayerine King. I live at 412 East Dengar. And uh, I live on a very nice street, but we also a narrow street, as the lady before me said. The streets are narrow. People have to park on the curbside. When you have more than one vehicle, uh, you have to park on the curbside. But my thing is, we have a beautiful, everybody have a pretty yard, but y'all always try to tell us what to do with our property, and I have a problem with the Big Brother property. You know, the thing you come and tell us what I can and can't do with my property. My husband passed away, had a truck in my backyard, have a six foot fence. My son was redoing the truck. I get a letter from the city, I've got to move my truck out of my yard. That's kind of stretching it a little bit. Be as concerned about repairing, fixing the streets, paving the streets on the south side that need to be paved as you do about telling us what we can and can't do with property we've worked for 30 years to pay for. That's where I have a problem. Nobody wants park cars on the, on, uh, in the yard that don't run, that's up on the blocks, but nobody wants that, and I'm not asking for that. But at least give us a little leeway on the property that we have worked and paid for. You know, y'all just want to come and tell us exactly what we can and cannot do. That's a big brother problem, and I have a problem with that. that then you don't come down and fix what needs to be fixed. Thank you. Very good. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Jeannie Warren. My address Warren. is 404 West Nobles Avenue, Midland, Texas. I'm located between Big Spring Street and A Street. I've been to the city several times in reference to the parking and my property value going down on that street. I've spoken with some council, I mean, with with you, of course, about it, and nothing has availed to what I have been trying to say. My neighbors have six cars parked. On some mornings when you go to get your mail, I have roosters that meet me and chase me back across the street, okay? Plus, on top of that, when there's a big fight on television, Vision. They bring their big screen television outside and you can't get down the street at all. Okay? Now, my neighbor has a fence that aligns my home, but he brings, and this is no offense because I know a lot of you bring your service trucks home and park them on the street. Okay? But along with this service truck from the oil field comes an SUV. When I back out, and I've called the city on that and have, be t have been told several times, you're taking a chance when you back out. If you get hit, that's your problem. I can't see. I can't see. And I think something should be dead about this. I have complained for years. I've been on the street now for 10 years. Nothing never came. Then on a Sunday afternoon, a little girl ran out between the streets, I mean the cars, and got hit. So it is a safety issue. And I have to say this, I have a car parked in my backyard. I keep it clean. I've told my son to get here next month and remove it. I want it moved. My house may not have bricks around it, but I've worked hard to keep it. And I expect, just like the man said earlier, I can't, I can't blame, I mean, I can blame my neighbors for how they live, but it takes down the value of my home. And I want my street beautiful. I want my city beautiful. I lived here. I was raised here. I graduated here. And I know a lot of you. And I'm proud of Midland, Texas. I really am. 
And that's all I have to say, and I've got to go back to work. Well, thank you for being here. That's good. Could I just ask a quick question about backyards? Is there someone from the staff that could answer that question? I don't, I don't believe we, you, could, you have to move the cars in the backyard. Is that right? Apparently you do. Okay, wait just a second. I, I'm, yes, sir. Let me ask Steve, because this is, this is the man that really knows the rules, and I, I think it might be helpful to know a little bit of the detail that we're currently under so that there isn't some miscommunication. I'm sorry to, to bump you there, man, if you don't mind, but it seems like that's a recurring theme that people really don't know if they hear about, talk, talk to cars in the backyard. Yeah, I'm, I'm Steve And, and stuff on um, cars on blocks, maybe. I'm Steve Thorpe, and I'm the building official. I'm responsible for code enforcement in the city of Midland. And to address the question about rear yard parking, uh, rear yard parking is perfectly acceptable, provided the vehicle is currently licensed and properly registered. If the vehicle is not currently registered and can be seen from the alley, from the street, or from neighboring property, if we're invited onto the property, and this is not from us looking over a fence, this is, you know, in clear plain view, it can be considered a junk vehicle in, as it's an inoperable vehicle or unlicensed. It's inoperable because it's not licensed. We can take it to a junk vehicle hearing and have it removed from the property. If that vehicle is licensed and insured and properly registered, we won't, we won't take any action towards that. Does that address your... your so your Steve, guess? what you're saying is if, if the next door neighbor calls because the car's back there and you can see that car from their backyard because you were invited in their backyard, you see that car, you see that it's not registered, you can have it removed. That's correct. correct? Okay. Uh, any, are there any other things you want me to say? Yeah, you might talk to about the um, parking in right-of-ways because that may be a misunderstanding about blocking drive or blocking sidewalks or there's a there could be a portion of your front yard that's in the right-of-way and uh, speak to that a little bit because that that's a, I don't know that's a, huge theme tonight, but I know people don't understand that. Right, and I, I may defer to the police uh, department here. We have representatives from their, that office here. But by our city ordinances, parking in the right of way is allowed, provided it does not block or obstruct the use of the sidewalk. So if you have a sidewalk that is at the back of curb, you really can't park in the right of way because you'll, you'll be parking on the curb. You can park curbside. And that's perfectly legal. Again, I want to remind people in Texas, uh, in Midland, Texas, that that's to be in the direction of traffic, not uh, opposing traffic. I, I know there's there's lack of enforcement uh, throughout the throughout the city, and I'm sure it's simply overwhelming because of how people park. But that is also a violation in the right of way. But if you had a street with no curb and gutter, um, you could park off of the, the paved surface of the street, or or if it was a dirt street in the right of way, in the proper direction, and that is not a violation of the, the law, according to everything I've been told. Uh, Lieutenant Bogart is here, and, and uh, one of the sergeants from traffic to, to corroborate that, um, if, if I've stated anything incorrectly, but I believe that is the law. Um, yep. The police department enforces right of way parking, code enforcement in par enforces parking on private property. I'm sorry, we're, we may just get these questions answered. I apologize to take your spot. Uh, Mr. Bogart, do you want to talk about maybe right-of-way parking? Because that's actually uh, a police situation, not necessarily code informant. Uh, one code one thing I probably need to make clear is most of the city ordinances dealing with parking on the right-of-way and also including junk vehicles are direct reflections of the actual <laughs> state law. City ordinance basically just mirrors state law. So state law covers most of these. Uh, vehicles that are in the right of way parked that get tagged and towed are either uh, parked illegally and they're blocking driveways or, or, or like uh, most people don't realize that you can't park within 30 feet of a stop sign because it obstructs your sight triangle around that stop sign. Uh, also vehicles that can be uh, tagged and towed later are those that are not registered, not inspected, or obviously dilapidated. You know, they can be out there and still have everything 
current on them, but if it's got all four tires flat and it's obviously a, a junk vehicle on the street, we can tag it, give them 48 hours. If they don't do anything in 48 hours, then we, we tow it. Any other questions? Is that does that help explain some of those questions so everybody understands where we're coming from? We'll, we'll, I'll get to you in one second, but I just wanted to have some of the city folks explain the rules so people understand where we're coming from because it may sound like perhaps the city is doing bad stuff or being mean to you, but some of those laws are coming from the state that we again have to follow. So thank you for uh, sharing those. Appreciate it. And really these are the, the, the things that we're trying to do is educate as much as anything. We want to be educated from you, and we're hoping we'll help you be educated as well. So, again, it's a good exchange. I'm not sure who was first, but I'll, I'll okay. Yes, My name is Eleanor Hill, and I live at 203 North Lincoln. And I'm here to complain. Okay, I have a carport. And then on the left side, I just have a place where two cars if I have visitors, can pull up there. And you mean to tell me that they can't, cannot park there unless it is paid or something, you know? And I, uh, and I want to ask uh, John Jane, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> Are you for this or against it? <laughs> That's what I want to ask you. Well, because you have met up with me before. I know. I know. <laughs> and, and I've been the fortunate one, I might add. Um, what I am for is, one, listening to the group here. I want to be clear about that, and I don't want anybody to make a mistake about that. Two, I'm also for making sure that property values are protected. And in my personal opinion, and this is mine, I'm only one of seven, but in my personal opinion, that trumps everything else. Because when your property value is high, your taxes are low, I will guarantee you, I'll show you the data that says that. And so I want my taxes low, but my property values have to be high as well. Well, and my so, tax was low, low this year. My okay. tax was high this year. Well, I tell you what, and your city of Midland taxes did not go up one penny this year unless you made some improvements to your home. Because this well, group, I the county improve. may have raised it, the school district may have raised it, but the city of Midland did not. But and nobody's ever said thank you for that. But getting on, the, <laughs> getting on the street department, where I live, okay, they put uh, uh, paid it down, which was, I say, seven hand pay. They didn't pay it like it should have been. We got trunk holes there. We cannot park on the side of my house unless you in a hole there. So you need to get up there and look at that while she's trying to tell us where to park out of car and when to park out of car. And next, next what you're going to be telling us we can't do. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> we on the hall. Where do we have to go? Or something. And I'm not going to tell you that, like, by the way. I feel like you're wrong. Because I have a carport and I, I don't park up in my yard because I love a beautiful grass and flowers and stuff, you know. But I do have a side on the side there that my company can park and then I have my family coming in. They allowed to be there three or four days. And then I'm going to uh, get cited for a ticket on that side of my home. And I feel like you're wrong for t trying to tell us where we can park and where we cannot park. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Ms. Hill. Appreciate that. Again, I'm hoping that, that we, you're hearing that we are not telling you what we want. What we're here for is to hear what you want. That's, that's the whole point. So again, I, I, we need to reflect your views and that's why we're truly here. Yes, ma'am. My name is Brenda Hamilton. Hi, Ms. Hamilton. I am here as a representative for my mother, Maxine Thomas who lives at 202 East Shandon. And what's your address, ma'am, please? My address is 1900 East Golf Course Road. Okay, thank you. My mother sent me here to tell you she has too many people in her old age, as she says, coming to her house parking. She has to have these people 
nurses, even her doctor comes to her house. She does not want to be fined for somebody pulling up in her yard or in front of her house. She says she pays enough in taxes. She's worked all her life to have that house and she doesn't want any more taxes and doesn't want to have to pay any fines. Very Thank good. you. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. First of all, I'd like to say a lot of these ladies that have come up here, I know personally because I'm executive director for Christmas in Action, and we certainly do not want to put a hardship on elderly and people who are in that situation. That is not what this is about. Um, my name is Tracy Vaughn. I live at 1105 Mogford, <clears throat> and I would like to thank you all for your service. This is not an easy job. Um, I'm asking the City Council to support the banning of parking of all vehicles on yards and side yards in our community. I have personally watched as this practice has spread like a cancer throughout Midland and am deeply concerned that if we do not change our codes and enforce the current ones, we will continue to see a decline in the way our neighborhoods look and in our property values. <clears throat> I understand there are areas that do not have curbs and gutters or the streets may be very, very narrow and these issues will have to be addressed. But please do not let this deter you from changing the current code. Other communities such as Arlington, Round Rock, and Lubbock have all addressed these issues and have come up with very good solutions and I know we can do the same. I have heard some say that they do not want more governmental intrusion in their lives and that it is their property and they should be able to do what they want on their own property. I too do not want excessive governmental in intrusion, but as the old saying goes, your right to punch me in the face stops at the end of my nose. In other words, your parking in your yard steps on my rights as a homeowner and depreciates the value of my property in my neighborhood. The week before July 4th, our Sunday school teacher emailed our class and asked us to give a definition of, of what freedom meant to us. July 4th Sunday, he read them, and this was one of my favorites. Freedom is driving down the highway and letting your hair blow in the wind without a care, while wearing your seat belt, observing the speed limit, and having a current driver's license, license plate, state inspection sticker, with an alcohol level below .08, and staying in your lane. In other words, your freedom ends where the rights of others begin. Luke 1240, um, 1248 says, to whom much is given from uh, him much will be required. We live in the most wonderful country in the world, and whether you agree or not, I believe the most blessed. And it shouldn't make any difference whether you live in a house with 600 square feet or 6,000 square feet, you should take pride in what God has blessed you with. The yard is a place to play, grow grass, trees, and flowers, not a place to park. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, yes, sir. My name is O.C. Smith. I live at 404 Smith. East Wadley. And I've always lived by the code to live, let live, and let alone. I've done that. But your people constantly cause me problems to where I'm having to deal with the city all the time, mostly your code department. I own a uh, half block across the street in front of my house and another house over there. I parked my trailers over there on the back. When I first ran into you, you told me I couldn't park my motor home over there. I didn't have a problem with that. I said, but park it back behind the house. I said, I can't see it behind the house because I live across the street. They said, well, just park it back even with the house. I said, okay, no problem. I just went and rented storage place. It's been in a storage place 10 years. I've been paying that rent. They started complaining about, to back up a little bit, before I bought this property, I'd call you guys about making somebody cut it. They may get them to do it twice a year. I'd call every month twice a year. They'd cut it. 
I bought the property, get rid of all of that. I keep the property cut. If it gets up about a foot, you're writing me a letter. Doesn't make any difference that it's been raining for a week or maybe that I started cutting it and then didn't get it finished because of one thing or the other. But all of this has to do with those trailers that I have parked over there. They said that you can't park those trailers over there. I said, okay, uh, I'll pull them down even with the house. They're in the backyard. Well, no, that's not your backyard. All them lots are not your backyard. I said, okay, I'll go down here and get a permit to fence my whole backyard all the way down to the corner and back up. Then I'll park my trailers back there. She said, you can't do that. That's commercial equipment. I said, there's no sign, anything on it. Nothing on it that says that's commercial. Yeah, it's got two or three tractors sitting on it. And I have a tractor there where I used to do some volunteer work to cut property down there for middle and neighborhood housing. So they didn't have to pay $10,000 to the city for cutting their property. Okay, I use it to cut my property too. But when I said I was gonna build that fence back there, she told me I couldn't park my trailers behind the fence because they're commercial. He just said, you can't see it over. Do I need to build an eight foot fence so he can't see over it? Now those may be questions you'll just have to deal with the code because I, don't, I couldn't answer them, but. Yeah, a little two-story. Yeah, they can see it. But what I'm getting at is every time that I have some, the city has a problem, they come to me. They came to me about the trash bin back there. I don't use that trash bin. Yes, sir. I said, the people over there across there, I said, look through the fence. You can see it. I said, I've moved it once after you complain. And every time I move it, another pile comes out there. I said, you need to go talk to those people. Oh, well, I can't do that. I can't look through the fence. <laughs> you look through my fence. <laughs> well, and we're kind of getting off track here, and we, no, we're, no, no, we no. need to really get into the coat to the what, all of this issue has, of parking on yards. has to yards. do with the parking on it. Well, we I don't know. Our, I, we, hold on a second. We yes, parked sir. our trailers out there in front of the house, and they come along and told my trailer, my next door's trailer, and his car. Mm -hmm. I parked, had him to told him just park cross street on that lot over there. They come over and said, I can't do that. Right. I don't think you can park trailers, RVs, boats, anything like that. that that's accurate. Again, I'm no expert at it, but is, is that right, Nowhere Steve? in the city. So oh, anyway, I think that's a whole nother fence? issue, and I think you've got up your three minutes. But if you would, again, I don't want to cut you off here but and i understand okay. your no, concerns okay but that's that's, 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 you, that's fine but i'm gonna, i'm gonna say one other thing all right this is your I'll last go. chance <laughs> thank you sir okay that ditch down there which is not in what you're talking about is is uh in the, putting our property in the floodplains and i've talked to mr bradford before he died and he was going to do something about it and i've talked to the lady down there, the engineer if you guys want to do this, then you need to do this because we're going to have to get a petition if we have to, to get that cleared up. All right. So anyway, that's very good. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Okay. Yes, sir. My name is Bill Ashley. I'm the pastor of Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. It's my good address to see you. is 3613 Humble Avenue. Most of my membership, all of my membership, lives in District Two, and therefore it pulls me in. And I have a couple of questions. Maybe you can answer it tonight, maybe you won't. But why all of a sudden this comes up? Secondly, most of those homes in District 2 has been built or was built, were built in the early 40s, 50s, one car garage, maybe a driveway. And now you want people to make their homes parking lots? Somebody said property value goes up, put a parking lot in your yard. That'll make it go up. You cannot regulate what a, an individual will do, what homeowners do, what property owners do on their own personal property. 
if I put a no trespassing sign, does that mean code enforcement can't come in there? That's what it means. If I'm working on my truck in my backyard and it takes me 10 years, code enforcement can come and say, I can't do that. And that's what I heard earlier. Folk working on old automobiles that are now being towed away. What right does the property owners have? And so what I'm asking you is that why all of a sudden we're visiting this now when there are homes, and, and the point I was making about the older homes, those individuals who have now children, 18, 19 years old, who have cars, one slab, one car garage, where are they gonna park? And you need to consider that. Uh, where are the capital improvements on the east and south sides? Hadn't been done, but we do it over here. So let's consider the homeowners before we tag an ordinance. It's just like, I'm gonna say this, it's just like BP polluting the Gulf. And all of a sudden, we want the government to come in. Prior to that, we don't want government in the business. You got to make a choice. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Reverend Ashley. Yes, sir. I'm Mike Morris. I live at 1002 West Cuthbert. I'm a local builder and real estate investor. Uh, I've been sitting out and listening to this. And I've been looking up there. I don't see Solomon. I don't see a pluck of Solomon. It's going to take the wisdom of Solomon for something. Yeah, I don't think we're Solomon. I, if you're even, I, you, you, you picked that right. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, uh, I just like to say, Ms. Vaughn and, and uh, Mrs. Vaughn and, and, and uh, Mr. Doss, I totally agree with them. And I can't reiterate, you know, any more succinctly my feeling about it. All I can do is go back 35 years. I started in Houston and uh, I didn't have any money, so I went to the, one of the worst sections of town, which was in the, called the Heights. And they had old Victorian homes and things that were just totally, totally in disarray and bombed out and deserted. And, yeah, I started there and uh, redid a few, uh, went on, became a builder later on. And, and after, after I left that area about five years, people had come and, and totally redone that area. And it became, uh, it was one of the, on a, I operated, the first two houses I did were on Tulane Street. 700 block and then the 800 block and about five years after I had moved on <coughs> the architectural uh, uh, part of Rice University put that on their tour and uh, all I can say is uh, at some point you turn around some point you don't uh, you know I don't know I don't know what to say I, I just happen to be uh, for it but it's it, there are going to have to be a lot of exceptions and it's going to like take the wisdom of Solomon and write this thing that's all right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Trimble? <clears throat> My name is Bobby Trimble. I live at 1419 Sparks. And uh, <clears throat> to give you a little history, I started Christmas in Action Program 38 years ago, and we've been working on homes on the south side, east side, and the southwest part of Midland for 38 years. And we've helped, had over 8,500 projects. We have done a lot to beautify our community. Were there black, brown, white, or purple? We've never, we don't go by colors when we ask to, they ask for help. When I do a roof or do a lot on, on things, I ask the families to move their junk cars. I don't want to go out there and work on a house, spend three or four or five thousand dollars on it, and there's junk all over it. Uh, most elderly people the cars are not theirs. It belongs to a son or a daughter or a brother or an uncle, and they're off someplace. This week, I had one to call me yesterday. We we're going to do his roof. I said, when you get the car moved, we'll come do it. He called me today. He said his son has moved the car out of his yard. This happens quite often. We're not trying to, uh, to make impressions on people that they've got to do this or got to do that. But there ought to be some pride someplace. Now, our work is done by volunteers. And I don't know how many of you have volunteered to work on Christmas Action or given money to Christmas Action, but if you hadn't, you should, because we have helped. I can look around here in this crowd and see some people that we've helped 
and worked on their homes before. So it's not something that we're just out here trying to do. It's something we want our city to look better. I spent 38 years trying to help it look better. I spent thousands of hours, and so has a lot of my friends. So has our churches, so have a lot of our businesses. And this is something I'm passionate about. It's not something that somebody had been forced on me. It's something God told me to do. <coughs> and this here is something that beautifies our city. I just got back from a trip in Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Portland, Utah. I didn't see a house one, and I drive through neighborhoods when I'm visiting these other communities because I start Christmas next April programs and old Christmas snacks and programs all over the United States. And I go into communities, I drive around in the communities. They wasn't parked cars all over the communities in towns where I was at in Missoula, Montana, Boise, Idaho, Cedar City, Utah. This is a problem in Midland. And if you don't believe it's a problem in Midland, get out and drive around all over Midland. It's not just on the south and east side. It's happening all over. And it's something that we need to do. And just because you live in a smaller house, that doesn't make any difference. All of us lived in a smaller house, but I never parked my cars up on the yard. I always mowed my grass. And this is something we should be passionate about. This is Midland. This is our home. This is our community. And we should be very proud of our community. And I'd like to say that I, Midland, Texas is recognized from, not only from George Bush and a few other big known celebrities to be from here, but Midland, Texas is known for the Christmas in Action program or the old Christmas in April program. And it's known for what we have done and what our community has done and what our leadership has done and what our people has done to further this so that we can make our elderly people a better place to live, put on roofs. We put on 70 roofs this past year for elderly people right here in Midland. No telling how much plumbing and stuff we did, but it's something we need to look at constantly is to make our place a better place to live. And I'm as long as God gives me good health I'm going to continue to do what I do, and I hope other people here in this community, you guys are all welcome. I'm doing a roof this Saturday. If you want to come and join me, we'll be working on one. But I'm thankful that we're trying to look at some of our things. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Trimble. All right, very good. <laughs> Mr. Sanchez, this is one of our accounting kind of commissioners for you that might not know. Well, I'm, I'm here just uh, being represented just as a citizen tonight. Um, Great. <clears throat> I apologize if my voice cracked. I just took uh, some allergy medicine, so my voice is coming in and out. Um, I live at 1215 South Dallas. Um, first of all, I want to thank the city council for uh, taking the opportunity to come out here um, this late in the evening. <clears throat> as you can hear, I've, I know a lot of people have come out here and asked uh, all sorts of questions, things that have nothing to do with parking. So I hope that encourages you guys to maybe come out into the community a little bit more often so that way they, they can come out and uh, talk about any other situation that's going on. So I just want to say uh, regarding the parking, um, I, I really hope that you uh, take into consideration every comment that has been made here, whether you're for it or against it. There have been many, many good arguments, um, again, for it and against it. Um, I do want to say, you know, I agree with the fact that uh, junk vehicles being in your front yard, I mean, that's, I think we, we're all in agreement in here uh, about that. Um, another thing, it, it seems like uh, they're, we're talking about safety in the streets. Um, what I would like for you as a city council to do is uh, take into consideration uh, maybe forming a task force. I know that at the very beginning it seemed like it wasn't that important. Um, but as you can hear now, whether you're for it or against it, there's a lot of good arguments. And I think that for us to come to uh, the best solution is to sit down um, and really come up with the, with the best option for all of us. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and reiterate what everybody has said. I think everything uh, has been said very, very well. Uh, some people had mentioned, you know, pride in our neighborhoods. I think that we all do that here in Midland, uh, whether you live in the south side, east side, northwest side, uh, whatever side you live on. Um, but I, I also hope that you take into consideration the economics. Um, 
some of us are not as fortunate as others uh, to be able to come up with the money at the last minute. Some of us are not fortunate as others uh, to live on, on the nicer side of town. And I understand we all start somewhere. Uh, so keep that in, in mind. We all start somewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Sanchez. Yes, sir. You'll go next. Mr. Dumeyer. Uh, my name is Jonathan Dumeyer. I live at 708 Raymond Road. Uh, Mr. Mayor, honorable council members. Uh, I take pride in this community very much, enough to have ran for city council, and other than living in this city, I've either been in D.C. or Austin serving this community. So when I say some of the comments, I don't mean disrespect to anybody in the audience. But as this city is a political subdivision of the state of Texas, and it has a long history of respecting property rights of people, and also this city is based on oil and agriculture. And that requires big trucks. With those two things, it's safer to put them on the yard than in the street. Our street, even on Raymond, and it's nowhere close to something like Dallas, is not that wide, especially when you have just Jeeps and Mustangs on the side of it, much less the big oil cars. I have a next door neighbor that works in the oil field and has to put his car on our side lot. Doesn't affect us any, my mother has flowers. But we have to think, when are we going to draw the line of government intervention and allow people to own those homes that if they have worked so hard for and let them do them what they want to those homes and not worry so much about the opinions of any other city. And when you think of West Texas and the Great West and Midland and its mentality, I think of cities like Amarillo, San Angelo, Odessa, and Midland that have that big sky, the sky is the limit type mentality. And the other three of them don't have a single ordinance worrying about whether people are parking in their front yard. All right, hold on, hold on. We don't want to get out of hand here, so please. Yes, sir. Uh, Michael Wallace, 1210 East Cuthbert. I have a question. I have an older house, and it, had, it doesn't have a fully paved driveway. It's the dirt in the middle and cr concrete on the side. So I have a question. Am I required to up update that and all like that? Um, so I park both of my vehicles there, even though I'm building a little back, and I got a driveway in the back, so I'm parking that. I also have a concern. If we're beautifying Midland, any seemingly reading the paper for you guys have already voted for this thing and going to approve it if nothing changes at the second reading. So wherever the money comes from off of these fees and fines, that money should be put back in that area and not put into the pot of the city. You because go. if you're taking money from the individuals that live in this area, whatever the, wherever the fines or fees are collected, that money should be put back into that area specifically to beautify that area, my opinion. Also, there should be areas that are grandfathered into this, this thing, some for property rights, some people who are older, and some of us who are getting close to that age, <laughs> we, we should be grandfathered in because of the, the, the property, the, back, the, the cost of the value, uh, the, when the property was built. I can, I'm concerned for that area, and then warnings. If y'all do go along with what you have already, the paper said you're already gonna do, there should be warnings given before a citation is actually issued to people, and give them op ample opportunity to move those vehicles before they're ticketed, because all of, all of a sudden you're gonna have all these cops out there ticketing people just to bring in more money for the city revenue, and we're not, I'm not for that area. I think government has its place to participate as much as it possibly can. I'm not, I'm Obama fan, so I'm, I'm for big government. And so, <laughs> so I, you do whatever you need to do. However, be careful about what you, what, what you are doing and just give us a warning. And don't just start ticking us right off that. And uh, that's beautification, grandfather, property rights. Uh, if you own property, you know, I have my issues with the city. I have some land that they keep bothering me, but I'm not going to get in there. That's personal. Thank you, sir. And appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and, guys, thank you for what y'all do. This is my second time being at one of you 
council, your council meeting, and I know it's a thankless. It's not a thankless job. A thankless we do job. appreciate what you do. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you for your service. You're former JP, so yeah. we you you know what it's like. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, Dwayne Washington, 1040, for Quinshaw. I'm a developer in this area, and I come from. I was born and raised here, but I lived in Atlanta for over 24 years. And over the coast, uh, and over the times and periods of change. They have organizations that call homeowners associations where the, the people of the area that they live in come together and they form their own homeowners associations to say what they can and cannot have in their communities. That's according to agreement of the people in their communities. It's not government, it's not state, it's the people who are paying their taxes for their properties who want their property values to look a certain way. I agree that any abandoned vehicles, untagged, unlicensed vehicles parked all over your neighborhood streets do take your property values down. But you can address your neighbor about that. It doesn't have to be forced upon them to do this. If you, in your own community, would like change in your community, you have to step forth as a people and make those changes. You can go door to door. You can get each and every neighbor to sign petitions that this is what we're going to allow in our communities and this is not what we're going to have. You don't need a panel to do that for you. Because as the seatbelt law was passed, it's a 50-50 chance that a seatbelt would save your life or take your life. But they forced it on you. You are all in here 60, 50 years old. And if you get caught without it, you're going to pay $400 for something that's not guaranteed. So in looking at that law that was passed, it wasn't a just law. Property values or something that you work very hard for, something that you have pride in, something that you sweat for. It shouldn't take a panel to tell you how to operate your neighborhoods. So in my perspective, I do not agree to oppose, uh, oppose to the law that they're trying to put on people. And if you do, you have to have guidelines. You have to put money back into the communities that you're taking it out of. And if you're going to take it, every dollar should be accountable for, and every dollar but should for an elder, a payment should be poured with that money. Not going into a politician's hands, buying their Mercedes, getting their upgrade on their lawns, getting their, I know how this system works. It's, it's an unjust system. They make it sound good, look good, but it's not good. Don't be fooled by the hype. Take care of your communities, vote it down, don't agree to it. And then go to work in your communities. Tell people what you are gonna have. The biggest thing should be on this panel right now that we're discussing about is all these commercial vehicles parked in your communities. That's what they should be talking about. That's what's tearing up your streets. That's what's tearing up your curve siding. That's what's tearing up all the lungs. A car did not tear up a lung. And if they're talking about the uh, development of the grass and the, the oil has already dissolved all that in this community. So let's be real. Take care of your communities. Walk your communities, talk to your neighbors. That's what's wrong with this whole world now. We do not communicate with each other. We make, let people make decisions for all of us. And we are individuals. We all love our communities. We all love our children running and playing. We have the rights. Once you start to allow people to come into your neighborhoods, into your homes, and, and tell you, they told you you couldn't spank your kids, now they're building incarceration centers for them. Come on, let's get real with it. All right, wait, wait, wait. Let's get real with it. That's good. That's good. Mr. Uh, Washington, thank you very much. I hope, hope we're, this is a we thing. It's not a they and us and them. We're, remember, we're all together in this, okay? So, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, to City Council, <clears throat> my name is Ronald Van Dyke. I live at 108 North Madison. Uh, I'm a native Midlander fourth generation Midlander. I've had someone in my family living here since 1921. Uh, I love my city. I love my country. And I love my state. Uh, I think there are a lot of issues here uh, tonight that, uh, that we're talking about, but there are some issues that we're not talking about, uh, one of those being ordinances that's already in place that's really not being enforced. 
uh, is that is that because of uh, a lack of code uh, people or whatever you need to do to you know I, I know we're shorthanded on police and sheriff so I won't even go there how will that affect the new ordinance how will that affect the enforcement of that particular ordinance plus the ones we already have in place that's not being enforced uh, is that going to put a overload on our city uh, seeing that we're cutting tax dollars and, and those things uh, so I, I think we should as a council uh, and and the rest of the, the city management should should probably take a hard look at uh, what's already in place uh, and if we can uh, enforce those uh, at a at a high rate uh, then maybe then maybe take into discussion something else thank you thanks sir mr van Dyke, thank you yes ma'am fred i'll get you ladies yes. first bird ladies first all right uh, mid jerskin 3306 west golf course after hearing from this large number of people this evening, shouldn't we take plenty of time to come up with a just and fair solution and not do something within the next month or two and maybe get a committee together, uh, maybe have another meeting uh, before an ordinance is passed and let the people know what's in that ordinance and be able to then say yes or no, we don't want this? because as a lot of these people have said, they have no other place to park. Um, in the older sections of town, they can't park on the street. Um, they don't have garages. A lot of people can't afford it. And I, I think we have to take all of these concerns into consideration before we pass an ordinance. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Erskine. Okay. Mr. Westmoreland. Yes. Fred Westmoreland, 200 Club Drive. Uh, point of personal uh, comment. Ronald, where are you? Who just spoke? I know your dad. He was a good man. He was a good friend of mine. I miss him a lot. All right. Dave was a good man. Was, Anyhow. You're using up your time. I know. I know. No, well, no that didn't count. No, clock's, that counts. Now, Wes, you hadn't been keeping time on everybody else. No, really now, come have. on now. Let's, Actually, uh, you know, we have I, been, but I've, be, I've given yeah, grace uh, on this. But yes, anyhow, we do. First have a of all, just a couple of comments to previous speakers. There is an ordinance in Lubbock, Texas that does that you cannot park any cars in front yards in Lubbock, Texas. And that is a big sky town, the last time I checked, halfway between here and Amarillo. Um, also, I think. I'm against taking more time. I think y'all are businessmen and women. Y'all know the issues. Y'all were elected to make decisions. Uh, more time is just going to put off a decision. Uh, elections are coming up. Um, I just think it's time to get on with it and uh, make a decision and, and go on down the road. Uh, I also am a homeowner. homeowner have worked for 30 years to pay off my house, and I also have property rights. I have property value rights. And I don't, wouldn't appreciate it, and there was someone who parked across the street from me, Dagley, and I didn't like it either. You know, I've got my rights. I paid for my house. I worked hard. I want it to be worth as much as possible. And I don't think there's a person here that could say that parking a car in the front yard would increase the value of your home or your neighborhood. Uh, it's unsightly. It negatively affects property values. Less revenue for the city. Less property taxes that are paid. Lower property taxes. If you were selling your house, would you like a car or truck parked in the yard across the street from you? I certainly wouldn't. Uh, would that vehicle in the yard help or hinder selling your home? I have a chance to say it would hinder selling your home. In the deal on property rights, I'm about as conservative as it comes in regards to property rights. But let me tell you, right now we live, and you're already being told what to do, whether you like it or not. And here are some examples. City already has ordinances to prohibit parking more than one vehicle in the front or side yard, parking within 15 feet of a fire hydrant, 
parking in the front of a driveway, parking on a sidewalk, parking a truck or trailer with more than two axles on the street, parking a vehicle longer than 50 feet or those having over a ton capacity, parking junk vehicles and overgrown weeds. I mean, um, you're already being told what to do. I like it or not, it's just the way it is. It's part of government. I mean, you know, they make the laws. Also, uh, building codes. And by the way, there was something that happened about 25 years ago that was uh, laws were changed kind of in the middle of the stream, and that was in regards to uh, the motor home issue. If you all remember, there was an ordinance passed that prohibited motor homes from being uh, parked in the front or side of the yard, and people had to build uh, some type of edifice around them. So uh, overall, I, I just think it's, uh, it's an issue that I, I, I'm a totally against any cars parking in the yards. I understand there have to be certain um, amendments and things such as that, but I just think it's uh, uh, the main thing is it's a terrible thing for property rights. And, you know, I work hard to pay off my house, and uh, I don't mind paying higher property taxes because when I'm ready to sell my house, that means it's worth more. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Oh. You can go next. Hello. Hi. It's good to see you. Felipe Lara, 1003 South Marshall. And I live in a section of town that has finally been acknowledged as being part of Midland. For a long time, it was forgotten. I appreciate everything that has been done with CDBG money, because I don't think the city has put any money into our area. And I don't have a problem with cars that are junk cars that have been abandoned to be removed. No. I, don't have, I don't have a problem because, anyway, uh, there's cars in my neighborhood that I wish it would be removed. But I don't appreciate being told that I cannot park my car in my home that I have paid for and I pay my taxes if I want to park in my yard I should be able to park in my yard. Doesn't mean I'm gonna leave my car parked there all the time, but if I have to, I should be able to park it. And we should, bottom line is we need a task force. We need a task force that represents all areas, north side, east, northwest, up and down, wherever. But that is what we need. And I hope that you'll consider that and listen to us because we elected you all to represent us and to listen to us when we have a concern. And there is a concern. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Lada. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to let her. She's been kind of waiting, if you don't mind, sir. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah, she was coming up, and okay. you jumped ahead of her. So I'm going to let, let her go. Okay. Thank you for being here. Retha Honeycutt, 1902 West Ohio Avenue. Um, first of all, I know someone had mentioned about uh, people that live in older houses. I live in a house that was built in 1948, and it has a single car garage, and we manage, and we don't park in our yard. Um, number two, someone else had mentioned about talking to your neighbor about that fact, about a problem with them parking in the yard. A very good friend of mine did that, and they threatened her with a lawsuit for harassment. So that doesn't work. It probably worked in the 50s when people we're more considerate about that kind of stuff, but it doesn't work now. But the one thing I also wanted to say is, I have worked downtown for 20 years, and y'all have done an excellent job in beautifying downtown, and it looks so much better. And I know that we're still in the business of attracting new enterprises and new businesses to come to our city, and when they see downtown, I think they're gonna be impressed. But I would like them to be impressed with everything else and to see that we're a neat and tidy city and that we don't park our cars in the yard. If we have to compete with a city for a new business such as Lubbock or Round Rock or Arlington and it comes down to how tidy the city is, we might lose. We really might lose. The other thing is on a task force. I really don't know that that's beneficial. I think this, this town hall meeting is, has been really nice but I think that it's just gonna draw it out. For those that are worried about um, phasing it in, it's my understanding that if, if you decide to approve this, it would not go into effect until sometime next spring. So that gives everybody ample time to make arrangements or to do something else. And I do thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Honeycutt. Yes, sir. <laughs> Roger Wetz, 4514 Aneta Drive. Uh, we have a wide street. There's plenty of room to park on along the side of the street. You know, if you take all the cars off the side of the street, it's probably a six-lane highway. 
which becomes a racetrack most of the time. And my problem is I have a neighbor that moved into a house uh, maybe about three years ago that uh, was running a remodeling business out of his house. We've, uh, after numerous calls to code enforcement, we finally got him to move a junk car that's in his front yard to his backyard. And now, you know, he's got a uh, wrecked car in his front yard, or not in the yard itself. It's on his driveway, but he parks his panel van in front of it. The panel van is a year and a half out of uh, inspection date. Uh, a half a year out of license plate date. He drives it every day so the cops aren't taking care of it. And the thing is, if he parks the tail end of it, it sticks over the sidewalk and you can't even see the back out of your driveway. And I've, you know, we call code enforcement, he moves it for a few days, they come by, check, oh, everything's fine, and he puts it back. He parks a daggum utility trailer full of, you know, uh, you know uh, parts from houses and stuff in his front yard he dumps those in the dumpster half the time. I mean, there's all kinds of issues, and it's just trying to get somebody in the city, rather than raising our taxes all the damn time, to go ahead and uh, take care of business. I mean, we got all these laws, and nobody's enforcing them. Or they send them a little notice, and they, you know, they just go about their business for a few days, and, and you know, until you start levying some fines on these people for multiple offenses, nothing's going to happen. And we're going to continue with the same thing. And like people are, you know, worried about their property property values. I mean, do you want somebody putting a, you know, like a waste plant next to your house? I don't. And we got, you know, it's a fairly nice uh, community, but you're letting people run it down. There are people moving in or running it down. And if we continue that way, we're going to look like, you know, you know, some uh, some low class, you know, part of a big city that's just turned into a trash pile. And we can't have that done. If you want to get people in here. You got you to take care of the city. Thank you, sir. All right. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Good Hi, evening. Rachel. Rachel Stone, uh, 19.02 North Pecos, here in Midland, 79705. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for, for uh, allowing us to come up here. Um, I live in District 3. I live, you know, John James is my representative. And th there's a lot of parking issues in my neighborhood. I live in, a, in an area where everybody shortcuts to go to A Street or to go to golf course, and you just pray for your life every single day there <laughs> because it's horrible. Um, the speeding there is, is just, it, it's bad, it's really bad. There's been several accidents. Every house but mine has had a car come into their house, and I don't know how mine has, I'm, I'm next, I know, I, I really am next, I, I know that. <laughs> But my concern was more with, um, I've, I took it upon myself to go to Southeast Midland and drive around. I drove around my neighborhood and we have a lot of people that park in my neighborhood, half on the street, half on the sidewalk. Only because the way the street curves, every single car on that side of town, I mean on that side of the sidewalk has been hit by the speeding cars. Every single one of them has had hit and runs both boys, except mine. <laughs> I don't know what it is about, you know, <laughs> but mine. But I also went to South East Mid Mid Midland to look and, and see what everybody was talking about. I come from the South Side. I was born and raised in the South Side. And so that, that is, I still consider that my neighborhood, even though I don't live there anymore. I uh, spread some flyers around, hung them at busy, you know, at, at uh, stores and stuff. But then I decided to go door to door and just knock on people's door doors and ask them, you know, why is your car parked here? Did you know this is ordinance and stuff like that? And the stories that you hear are people that are just, just trying to make it. They're working paycheck to paycheck. Uh, one elderly lady was in tears. She's like, I've lived here 80 something years because that was her dad's home. And she, her concern was, she doesn't have a driveway. There's a lot of homes there that don't have driveways. And she had a little bit of gravel, but you could barely see it. I mean, it had grass on it. Her concern was, how was she going to pay for this? So I want you to take into consideration the economics of it, of not only, you know, I'm sure there's other areas the gentleman spoke about, the one that's in trouble with his wife for the anniversary, uh, that, you know, he too has, you know, park on, on his grass and stuff. You need to take into consideration other areas and how that's going to affect them. Uh, because I think it's going to hurt a lot of people. I mean, I know that 
I've heard uh, Scott Dufford several times say how, you know, that you guys take pride, that you're very conservative, and that you don't want to spend a lot of money, but we don't either, and these people can't afford it. They just can't. Uh, another gentleman spoke about, you know, the exceptions and the exceptions, and when are we going to stop making exceptions? The time we make exceptions and when, is when all streets are the same. They're all paved. They're all, you know, we have curves. I have, my husband has an aunt that lives in that side of town that you don't know where her yard starts and where the street, because it's caliche. There is nothing there. And so she parks in the front yard. We think it might be her front yard. We think it might be the street. It's very narrow. So even if she does, if you, if you tell her she can't park, then she'll park on the street. Where is the street? So you have to look at that and just, I, I don't think we can make a decision here in the next few months or whatever. It really needs to be looked at more. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. All right. Yes, ma'am. I'm Thank Peggy you Rogers. I live at 3525 Stanland. I think Michael's my city councilman. Uh, and I sympathize with a lot of these people who have spoken here tonight. I understand their problem, but I have a problem too. And there's some, uh, several people in our neighborhood that are just ruining the whole, whole neighborhood. And it was kind of like a domino effect. You let one start doing it, and then this one starts, and this one starts, and they're parking uh, this one particular man parks two or three cars up in his front yard all the time. He not only has cars in his yard, some of them not drivable, he has barbecue pits, he has uh, commodes. Uh, we finally got the commode moved because I had, uh, last summer, I had a, a Charles Terry roofing sign in my yard and the code enforcement guy stopped and said, if you don't move, remove the, the yard and uh, remove the sign in 24 hours, we're gonna find you. And I said, you're gonna find me for this little bitty cord? And he's had that commode sitting in his yard for two years. Well, he moved, they moved the commode. But what I want to say is what a lot of these people have said here tonight. Uh, before you make a decision, you have to consider those people who are against it and the people who are for it. But you ask yourself, would you buy my house when he has three or four cars sitting in his yard over here with barbecue pits and commodes and things like that? So just consider that before you make this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rogers. Yes, sir. Yeah, come on, you want to have a seat there? We'll get Mr. Next. Mayor. My name is Carol Nall. I live at 321 Thorn Ridge, and 38 years ago, I worked with Bobby Tribble on that first project at the age of 12, um, along with my little brother and several others. Um, this is not an easy question. I, I see several skits in Greater Tuna. As this goes yeah. along, I'm, I'm reminded of several years ago when we were trying to build the stadium out there that. Uh, it was $39 for the horseshoe pitching pit, but it's moved to $42. So um, this is one of those issues um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, on my way over here on major thoroughfares, major streets in this city, I saw four houses just with cars sitting on blocks out there. Those are an issue to me. A car sitting in the yard or parked in the yard for eight hours overnight or during the day that, you know, if we've got shift work going on, that's not as much of an issue to me. Now, where do we define a yard? I've got a guy over here on Thomason that's paving the whole front area without an exit out. Is that his front yard? So my street on Thorn Ridge is a drainage street, and there are times where we have to park up on the curb and up into the sidewalk even to be able to get in our cars. We have a great neighborhood. The, the neighbors all take care of their stuff, but we have issues. So we need to be real careful in how we define what, what parking is and, and how we establish the parking. We've heard time and time again tonight enforce the codes that we have, and that's what I ask as a citizen and a longtime member of this community, that we enforce the current codes that we have in order to take care of a great deal of the issues that we have in place. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Knoll. Yes, ma'am. 
My name is Alicia Nunez, and I live at 408 East Oaks. Uh, we just got annexed uh, this year. Oh, so you were part of the window pane? Yes, sir, I Thank am. Thank you. And I'm very displeased with it. Oh, I'm <laughs> I sorry. I never did want to get the city involved in our area. We've lived there for 36 years plus. We've always done what we wanted to do because it was our area, and we keep it as clean as we can. We do park and we do not have asphalt. We do not have anything. It's just mud and, and rock. And that's what we can afford. We can't afford to pay and make it more beautiful. But that's why we had bought there because we could do basically what we wanted. City goes in, we can't have cars, we have to cut our weeds, we have to, we have to, we have to, we have to. Okay, we're trying to abide by everything that is told. But this is where I draw the line. I cannot afford to do this, okay? I have six kids, I have six grandkids. They come visit me. They all, I want them all in my yard. I want them safe. Cars pass through there very fast, fine. I want them in the yard. I want my kids to play in the yard where I feel they're more secure than out in the street. So please, Help us. Don't do this to us. Please. Thank you, Ms. Nunez. Yes. All right. Yes, ma'am. My name is Teresa Colvin, and my address is 707 West Pine Avenue. Hi. And I stand here today to ask you to please reconsider your, your uh, a proposal today. Um, fortunately, I live in a neighborhood where everybody has two car garages, and we have pavement, and you know, we take pride in our street, um, so much so that my husband takes care of at least four yards to keep it looking well. So we thank God for that. But um, not everybody does. I know many seniors who have bought and paid for their homes and cannot afford to do what you're re requesting. And if you do ask them to, the, to, to do that, today you have seniors who are struggling, you know, just to make ends meet, to by their medications and you want them to pay their yard, to me it's just um, a demand that is just not necessary. And I, I just wish you would reconsider it and um, to enforce it would just be a little bit much because you know when these people have worked 30 years for their homes and they've done what they want, upkeep and what have you, and for you to tell them that they can't park on their own property is just beyond my comprehension so I stand here and ask you to reconsider it if these vehicles are drivable vehicles you should allow them to park on the side of their yard or wherever they want because there are safety reasons that they need to be concerned about as well some of them have people that come in all hours of the night private duty whatever and they can't park on the street they need to get as close to the house as they need to whatever the reasons may be there it's their property let them have their own property and again homeowners associations different things that have already been talked about if you're so much concerned about that then maybe look into the properties in those areas thanks Ms. Colvin all right are we gonna I don't see anybody else getting up so um, okay yes ma'am sure of course You just pull it loose. That's fine. You can just hold it if you'd like. There you go. That might be easier for you. My name is Leah Ashley. I live at 4504 Anetta Drive. I've lived in Midland five different times, and the last time I've been here, like 42 years. I live on a very wide street. Uh, as my neighbor said, uh, so parking on the street is no problem, except I have uh, a grandson and his wife living with me. Uh, their vehicles, we can do it, and I have a single driveway. My garage is not a garage anymore because I had so many kids, I had to make a bedroom out of it. So we can park four cars, two on the street, to in my driveway, but my grandson's work truck has to be parked in my 
on my grass because it's got equipment in it that he doesn't need to leave out on the street. And it's my house. <laughs> I've worked very hard to pay for it. And I think that if I want him to park his truck there, which he needs to do, he should be allowed to do so. Uh, I work to pay my taxes. Uh, I'm 80. And uh, I think it's my right to say, OK, you can park your car here. If we had junk, if they were junky vehicles, it would be a different thing. We don't have anything that isn't licensed, that isn't drivable. We pay license on those vehicles every year. We pay to have uh, them inspected. We put gas in them, so on. They're contributing to our economy. And I think I have the right to say, OK, you can park your truck here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ashley. Okay. Anybody else? All right, we're, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing then. Um, there will be no action tonight. Just thank each one of you for coming and for giving us your, uh, your input. Again, I hope that what you saw is us listening to you, and then we'll try to come up with some, with some solutions. I that, um, can't remember the gentleman's name that said that we need to have the wisdom of Solomon and that, I don't, you know, we're not start, I'm not starting at that level, so we'll just have to really work hard to get there. So um, do you have any closing comments? Anybody want to say anything necessarily? I do. First of all, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for coming out, expressing your, your viewpoints. And I do sympathize with Skeet Doss, Tracy Vaughn, Rita Honeycutt, Bobby Trimble, Fred Westmoreland, and everybody that got up to speak. We want you to make money. We want Midland to be beautiful. But at some point, you know, we're going to have to take it in stages. And I also would love for you guys to, when the time comes, we have so many important issues facing Midland. If you would really pour as much energy into helping set up a housing standards commission so we can begin to address slum lords. I would really appreciate that because other cities, if they have a no parking in the yard, they also deal with slum lords. And I would really would appreciate your help on that. Thank you. John? You know, I would like to echo my, my thanks as well. Um, I think it's really important for me, however, to um, not point out any individual because I think everybody's comments mattered, and and there were a lot of there were a lot of comments about what y'all are doing. Well, n nothing's been done yet because the law's not in place, and that's why we're, we're here today. But more importantly, I want everybody to take this to heart. Um, one, of, one of the people who spoke said something that really struck a chord with me. Um, Midland, as a community, has invested millions of dollars in the south and east side oh. that Midland did not have to. The, the, the CDBG funds that come from the federal government, that's only a small portion of the dollars that have gone to pave the streets in the south and east side. And I think if we're going to continue to do the good uh, that is important for the south and east side by taking money from the other sides of the community and investing it into the south and east side, there's going to have to be a trade-off. And I don't know where this, this street or this parking issue is going to go, but I think it's important for everybody in this room to understand that the millions of dollars that have paved streets in the south and east side come from other parts of town. And it's important that we remember that when we're, when we're thinking about the investment that the, the people of Midland have made in our community. And, and I'm happy to, to visit with anyone after this about uh, my position or um, answer any personal questions that, that folks might have on, 
on this issue, and I would love to take an opportunity um, if, because we haven't moved in the direction of a task force, I'm happy to meet with those whose positions might be a little bit different from mine to help understand more what they're talking about, but also to help them understand this notion about investment in the community and whether it continues or not, because okay, I think that's so, very, very uh, wait important. Wait a minute, I just have one question. You said monies are coming from other areas of town being invested in District 2, but what about our monies? What little there may be is also invested. It's in absolutely other areas happening of town. that way, but so, uh, I but think, I think it's point, clear this that is not, this is not a debate. We are here to hear the citizens. Okay, then comments. don't debate, Ms. Haley. Okay, it's not well, a debate. then I just had to correct that. Okay. I, I just uh, have one thing to say, and <clears throat> It's really not an us and them. It's it's about Midland, and I'd like everybody, no matter what side of the issue you're on, to at least be open and try to understand the other side and realize that as a council, we're, we're going to do the best we can to, to do what's right for everybody. Um, but it, it shouldn't be it isn't in us and them. Midland is a great place to live. I think everybody here would agree. Midland is a better community than most. And um, let's just remember that when we're leaving. Uh, you can disagree with uh, somebody, but let's, let's remember as a community see both sides and be open to different ideas. I appreciate it. All right, anyone else? All right, very good. Thanks again for everyone being here and uh, come and join us for another council meeting Sunday.